Hi divers, Alec Pierce, Vintage Scuba. Now we have talked previously about buoyancy compensators and I actually showed you some old buoyancy compensators and, and how they developed a bit, but I have some new aspects to show you. Uh, so let's go through it again very, very quickly. Buoyancy compensators, that fantastic mandatory, not mandatory because it's legislated, but because you'd almost be crazy not to dive with a buoyancy compensator. When I started diving, we didn't have them. And what a nuisance that was. Maybe we'll talk about that someday. How we got down without a BC and how they got back up without a BC. Anyway, uh, however, I wanted to show you these. This is one of the very first types of life vest or BCs that we had. Now, we didn't call them BCs. That word had not really been invented. It was a life vest. And uh, this, this, is, this is typical. It's made of canvas, rubber lined, and it has an oil inflator. Still works. And, and uh, a waistband that goes around your tummy and clips with a metal clip. And then it didn't have any zippers or Velcro in those days. It had the, the chest actually tied, you actually tied a knot in two little straps. And it had, of course, the mandatory, or the, the common, very common, CO2 cartridge. You know, a little cartridge in there, and you pull on this, and, and the BC would inflate with there. Now, this is actually a, a life vest. This is very similar to what you would find if you reached under the seat on the airplane. You know, when the pretty stewardess says, there's a life vest under the seat, and you want to check it out? Yeah, reach underneath, and there'd be a cord under there, grab it and pull. No, I don't do that. I'm kidding. But this is similar to what you would see in airlines today. In fact, this particular one, which is the same type we use when we started scuba diving, was war surplus. So it was probably X. Air Force, X Navy. I'm not too sure exactly where it came from. There's no markings on this whatsoever. But uh, this is an old, old fabric BC. Okay. Now, this was not a BC because you could blow air into it, but you couldn't get the air out. Not easily. You could take some of it out, but all the air from this point up was trapped in the BC. So it's not really a BC. Okay. So there's that one. Now, these eventually became popular for divers. They weren't popular at the very beginning because divers in those days were he-men, you know. We don't need no stinking life vest. <laughs> that attitude, not very smart, but that's, we weren't very smart. Um, and, and so they weren't all that popular, but they started to catch on and, and more and more clubs and so on advocated the use of them. So what happened was manufacturers made a copy of them. You see the similarity? They used newer materials, nice bright colored materials, nylon, still PVC line on. Now they, they, they started to use some new devices, zippers, up and down the front instead of tying them. But they had the same thing, oil inflator, push on this, and air went in. Same CO2 type of mechanism. This is hidden away inside the pocket. But it's in there, CO2, and you pull on this to blow it up. Same way strap, some had a, a, a crotch strap as well, but this is the same type of thing. So this is still just a life vest. You can call it a BC if you want, but there's no buoyancy compensation. This was just used to support you on the surface at the end of the dive when you got tired. Here's another manufacturer, Healthways, big, big company. Uh, back in the 50s and 60s, a big company. Same idea, zipper, CO2 cartridge, air inflator, and so on. It, was, it took quite a while before divers had enough input so that the manufacturers actually began to produce a true buoyancy compensator. And this is one of the very first true buoyancy compensators. Now, it's similar in a lot of ways. It's a vest, goes around your neck, kind of like a, kind of like a horse collar. Yes, that's right. <laughs> These were called horse collar vests, because it looked like a horse collar. And this is very similar in most ways. Strap down the back, a waist strap, a CO2 cartridge in there, and, uh, and uh, 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 did exactly the same thing. It would support you on the surface. But this is a true buoyancy compensator. What's the difference? Well, the true buoyancy compensator allows you to put air in by blowing, and it allows you to let air out. As you let air out, you can hold this above your head, hold the, the knob down, the same knob you use to put air in, hold it down like this, and you see all the air in the BC went up the top. So th this, this hose was connected at the top of the BC, not halfway down the vest. So if you hold this up in the air, now you know this, you divers, you hold this up, hold that, and the air comes out. So you can put air in when you need support, you can let air out when you want to start your descent or begin descending, depending on what you want to do. This is one of the very first true buoyancy compensators. Now, because you could put air into this underwater, it created another small issue. If you put air into this at 20 or 30 feet, 
and it started to rise to the surface, that air expanded. And you would rise faster and faster, and the air expanded faster and faster, and you would come out of the water like a Poseidon rocket. Uh, not good for the diver. Very, very hard on boat bottoms, and uh, not safe either. You divers, again, you know what I'm talking about. You can get have medical problems because of that. So this BC has another small device that does not appear on the earlier life vest, and that is an overpressure valve. That's right, as the pressure builds up inside the BC to prevent the BC from exploding, eventually the in internal pressure would pop and air would come out of this device right here. So you would get to the surface and probably you would not be in great condition, but your BC would be fine. Yeah, yeah. Now, now these have been improved and they now have a cord so that this overpressure valve has now become what we now call a purge well, so you can pull on it to let air out quickly if you want to. But originally they looked like this, just an overpressure valve. Now this particular BC has an additional advantage. Sorry. Uh, has an additional advantage. This particular BC has been changed into a power inflate. Take a close look right here. Maybe you can take get in here closely, uh, Kevin, just for one minute if you don't mind. On the end of the corrugated hose, which originally simply had an open closed valve on here, this particular diver has gone to another company called Decor. Uh, later, the De Decor was big in the 60s and 70s, uh, 70s and 80s, I suppose, into the 90s. And Decor was a leading innovator in scuba, one of the best companies around, in my opinion. And this device right here, you would buy separately. And then you would take the original inflate, deflate valve, a little knob to blow air, and you would take it out insert this device from there to there in and put a pipe clamp on it. You can see the pipe clamp there. Clamp it on snugly. What did that give you? Well, you still could inflate this BC orally uh, just simply by pushing down on this and blowing into it. Uh, this particular mouthpiece, by the way, made by Dacre, was one of the very best in my opinion. This was called the soft inflate. That orange part is soft rubber. And so it only took one hand. Most BCs even today require you to take it and use your fingers to open it and then blow, let go, open, blow, let go, and so on to trap the air. This is very, very good decor BC inflator, oral inflator, it was excellent, watch. Yeah, you, just, you could just push on it with your lips or your teeth, whatever was comfortable. Blow air in. When you took it away, it was trapped. So it was easy, no hands. So it was a really, really good oral inflator. But most important, or, or the big advantage of this particular device which you bought aftermarket and put on your older BC, right, was this section right here, the power inflator, an early example of a power inflator. So this spigot connected by way of a hose, you all know this now, to your regulator, it snapped on. And then when you wanted to inflate the BC automatically, you simply push the button. It would blow up from the air in your tank. No more blowing on it. So that was a big innovation. And originally, these power inflators, PIV valve, power inflate valve, originally these were aftermarket. They didn't come with the BCDs. You bought them aftermarket from another company and added them to your BCD. Now, they were so popular because they made filling the BCs so easy that very soon all BC manufacturers put power inflate valves on all their BCs, and that's what you have today. When you buy a Boynton compensator, you have a, you have a power inflate. You can still orally inflate on the end, not that easily, but you can also power inflate with the button and let the air out simply by holding pulling it up like that. So that's pretty exciting. Something's missing. They have not yet developed the, the shoulder dump. You know that in most BCs today, if you want to dump air quickly, you pull and a cable runs up through the hose and it dumps an exhaust valve. Plus you have this dump over here that I discussed a moment ago. This doesn't have that yet. So this is a transition buoyancy compensator. An early buoyancy compensator with a dump valve, not a purge, no shoulder dump, and an aftermarket added power inflate valve. Real transitional. I don't know how many of you have ever seen a CO2 cartridge work. But it's really quite simple. The CO2 cartridge slipped into a mechanism on the back. That mechanism was connected with a cord. And when you pulled on the cord, in theory anyway, DC inflated, just like that. Yeah, that this is old, okay, this is 30, 40 years old, so it wasn't just perfect, but there you go, and your BC was inflated. Those CO2 cartridges, maybe that's the first time you've seen that happen. Pretty neat. Uh, however, it also created problems. This is fully inflated. 
you are on your way to the surface, like it or not. I don't care how many weights you have on, you're heading to the surface, okay? Unless you were very, very deep. If you were very deep, say 100 feet or so, this would not inflate like this. You might have some control. But if you were in 20 or 30 feet of water and you pulled your CO2 cartridge, up you go. No way of stopping it. So there's a couple of reasons why CO2 cartridges are not used anymore. That's one. The diver essentially has lost control. You can't do anything to stop your ascent. You're out of here. No dumps, right? And other uh, medical reasons as well. That's, this BC is now full of carbon dioxide gas. Not deadly, but not breathable. So it could cause problems as well. But anyway, now you've seen a whole bunch of stuff on this transitional BC. I want to show you a couple more really quickly. Give me one second. Ah, what the heck is this? Well, this is really the next step in buoyancy compensators. I chose this particular model to show this next step because this model is a little bit unique as well. But the next step entailed attaching your tank to the BCD. Now, that's how you do it now. You know that. There's a band, and the BCD is sandwiched, clamped tightly to your tank. So now your scuba tank and your BCD become a unit, right? put the regulator on and you have what we call a scuba system. Tank, regulator, and BCD. That is the next step in the development of BCDs. I want to show you this particular one. This particular buoyancy compensator <clears throat> has all the features of a modern BCD. This particular model is not made anymore. It's a little bit weird. It worked, but it was a little bit weird. It had an awful lot of clips and straps and snaps and, and, and just created some problems. Let me see if I can't put this on where you see why it was a bit of a problem. It starts to go on. I'm not sure how much of this you can get, Kevin. It starts to go on like a regular buoyancy compensator. <clears throat> put it on like a jacket. See? And you have these two fairly large air cells over your shoulder. Plus there's air cell at the back. Uh huh. And, uh, and so on. And your tank is back there. So now what you need to do, you need to get all the clamps, all the, all the, all the straps. There's one that holds this shoulder down. This waistband goes through it. Uh -huh. There's one that holds this shoulder down. Waistband goes through that. There's one that comes up through your crotch, eventually. <clears throat> so you can see why this wasn't all that popular. There it is. I got it. It has a slot on it too. That same clip goes through there. Oh, ah, ah. And then eventually you got to the one that clipped all together. And that goes on there like that. Whew. Take a close up there, Kevin. <laughs> you see? So it took almost as long to put on the BC as it did to put on your wetsuit. One reason why this particular model didn't, uh, it didn't last very long. We used to call this a praying mantis because of all the straps and the clips and over the shoulder and everything else. I don't really know why they called it praying mantis. I guess it looks a little bit like that. But this was called the praying mantis. But it has all the uh, features. It has an in inflate valve, oral inflate valve, like that. And it has a purge valve. Somewhere here there's a purge valve on the back. Yeah, oh, is there one there? And it also has a power inflate. Now this particular company had a little bit of a, a, a ongoing <clears throat> battle with the industry. They always like to make their products proprietary, meaning it's theirs. Nobody else, it's different from everybody else's, and often it was. Didn't make it good though. So they had a power inflate valve down here, separate from this. I mean, you know how handy this is, it's all in one hand. So it had your oral inflate, and today you'd have a dump on it. Then over here is your power inflate, and it had a separate hose, and even the hose was different as well. It wasn't a standardized hose. So for whatever reason, uh, that's what it is, and this is a neat BC. The, now you've seen one, the Aqualung, U.S. Divers Aqualung Praying Mantis. Tell, tell, ask your instructor if he's ever seen a BCD called the Praying Mantis. Okay, and now I have one more to show you. Some divers consider this the ultimate BCD. Even though it's based on the old fashioned, in some ways, the older style horse collar, some divers call it the ultimate. Let me show you why. Some divers will tell you this is the ultimate BC. It's uh, commonly called the Fenzi. There were other brands as well, but the Fenzi was one of the most famous uh, brands uh, of this particular BC. So what's the big deal? It looks like a standard horse collar, doesn't it? Yeah, it does actually. Uh, uh, your, your buoyancy compensating corrugated hose, and it has a power inflate on here, push the button, blow, 
It also has a dump. This is a true dump. It's sure it acts as an overpressure valve so the BC doesn't blow up, but it's a true dump. You reach down here, see there's a cord, and you pull on that cord, and that dumps the air to the BC by pulling up there. So it's all the features, straps, the whole thing. So what makes it kind of neat? And, and what about the power inflate? Well, it has a power inflate. You just can't see it. What the heck? How did they do that? There's no tank. No, you don't need a tank with this BC. It has its own tank. That's right. Mounted right down here at the back of the BC in a little slot, a little pouch down here. There's a tank of air. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty neat, huh? And, and it has a standard yoke attachment. So you take this tank and you put that yoke onto your scuba tank, open your scuba tank valve and fill it. That's right, after every dive. And then when you want to put air into the BC, open the valve right here. <laughs> Put it into the BC. Pretty slick, huh? And a lot of divers still use this. It's not a new style, but you can still buy them. You can still buy them brand spanking new. I have one brand new in a bag. It's old, 20 years old, but it's brand spanking new. It's still in the bag. So that's the Fenzi. And I don't know if it is necessarily the end of BC development, nor even the ultimate BC, but a lot of divers really like this. The self-inflating. How about that? Self-power inflating. Yeah. SPI, Self Power Inflating Buoyancy Compensator from Fancy. So that's kind of a development BC from the old life jacket to this uh, Fancy. Anyway, there's some more interesting information, and you've got to see a CO2 card just blow up and the Fancy inflate and so on. I hope there's something interesting in there for you. Okay, guys, that's it. Talk to you again real soon. Alec from Vintage Scuba.